Blessed be everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking binding spells, but before we do that, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com, author of Crafting Your Wiccan Path. And if you want to know more about Wicca and witchcraft or take a deep dive into your inner self through shadow work, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you want to know more about how you can start your witchcraft practice, Without all of the confusion of not knowing, well, what do you do and how do we do it? I do have a roadmap video that just gives you an outline of what we do and a process that you can follow to help you learn what you need to learn. The link to that is in the description field below this video and it's called How to Start Your Witchcraft Practice. I've had a few requests about binding spells over the last few weeks, so I thought I'd just put them all together into one video about binding spells. They're not complicated spells, uh, but people seem to be having a few questions about how to do them. So I'm going to offer you three different ways that you can bind that are really simple ways and ways that I've certainly used. And I know a lot of other people use these methods as well. But first off, what is a binding spell? Mostly a binding spell is how to bind somebody from doing something. Think of it as a restraining order. You're trying to prevent somebody from doing something. Now, from an ethical point of view, you want to be making sure that it falls into the protection magic realm. So you're wanting to bind the person from doing something that is potentially harmful to you <laughs> or to your family or friends or whatever. And make sure that it is definitely something that is harmful to you. So they might be threatening your physical well-being. They might be uh, threatening your livelihood, your, your job, your career, your business. They might be threatening you through bullying, through harassment, through stalking, that kind of thing. You, where it's, it's causing you an incredible uh, mental and it's causing you a lot of fear, essentially. And that fear can be fear basically for your life or for somebody else's life or, or well-being. So make sure that it is something that is a real threat to you before you go manipulating other people because binding is that it's influencing other people and you want to make sure that you are doing it for protection reasons if you feel the need to do it it's like a restraining order you'll put in a restraining order from somebody who is potentially violent to you then a bind is a magical way of doing that there's different ways that you can go about it though one of the questions was about freezer spells. Freezer spells are a form of bind where you're freezing the person. So you're freezing them from doing something. You're cooling them down, cooling them off. And they're effective. I personally have not found them to be as effective as other methods, but some people do like to use the freezer spells. They can be pretty quick and pretty easy. They can also be used to help a situation where maybe you've had an argument with someone or someone's angry, uh, resentful or any of those sorts of fiery type of uh, conflicts. Putting their name on a paper and throwing them in the freezer is a way of cooling them down, okay, <laughs> energetically. So you can use a freezer spell to help cool an argument or to cool something down, to take the heat out of something. So it's not necessarily binding them it is just cooling them down and taking the heat out of something. That is probably the best way to work with a freezer spell rather than trying to use it necessarily as a bind. You can certainly put their name on a small piece of paper and stick them in some water and make an ice cube around it so the paper's in the ice once the water freezes. That's a form of binding. So a small piece of paper, put their name on that piece of paper. And then as you're putting them in the ice cube or the little uh, container of water, you would say, I freeze and bind you name so-and-so from doing whatever it is you're binding them from doing. Be specific with your bind. You want to make sure that you're only binding them from doing that particular action. Okay. You don't want to harm the person. You're not reaching into that harmful more black magic aspect you're working more with just trying to protect yourself from whatever this person's doing so make sure you're specific so if that person's bullying you for example 
I bind you so and so from bullying me. I bind you so and so from bullying me as you're putting them in the water and sticking the water, the container of water in the freezer to make them then put them in on ice basically. <laughs> so that's one way that you can do it. Another way that you can do it is by literally kind of binding them from a in a way that see what we do with magic is we do a physical action that mimics the action that we're wanting to happen. So if we want to restrain somebody, have a magical restraining order on somebody, then you want to do something that is very similar to what a, a binding is in a metaphorical sense. So when we think of binding, we can think of tying somebody up or being bound. Think of the weight smith uh, eight of swords in the tarot where you've got the the woman who's uh, blindfolded and she's bound right that's that's the sort of image that i think of when it comes to binding spells you're kind of like binding somebody from being able to take any action in any way so the way that you can do that is to write the name on a piece of paper lengthwise and uh, lengthwise widthwise then turn it up and then write on here, I bind you from whatever it is that you're binding them from. So if they're bullying you, I bind you from bullying me and causing me harm. I bind you from causing me harm and bullying me. And you can get even more specific if it's something that they're bullying you about. So maybe they're bullying you in some really specific way. Write that on the piece of paper uh, going down vertically okay so horizontally the names on the paper turn it around vertically writing it down as many times as you can get it on the piece of paper then with that piece of paper just fold it over away from you because you're binding them you're taking them away from you and then rolling the piece of paper up into a small rolled piece of paper take your thread so it can be a black thread or a red thread or both a black and a red thread and as you're winding the thread around that piece of paper you say I bind you so and so from harming me and bullying me I bind you so and so from harming me and bullying me and as you're doing that you're binding them okay you're binding the paper which represents them is like binding them so that's the correspondence aspect of magic. With this piece of paper then you want to make sure that you put it somewhere that it is going to be uh, bound and safe. You can pop this in your water and make a nice cube with it so that's one way you can do it. The problem with the freezer bit is if you're living with other people so if you're in a share house then it might be a problem doing this sort of stuff in your fridge and your freezer if other people find it they may take it out and it may melt and then of course uh, you've got to go and do it all over again or you can make yourself a little binding pouch out of some black fabric sew up the sides with some black cotton or red cotton or both leave an opening at the top pop your piece of paper in that pouch and then sew it up with your red and black cotton or get yourself an envelope which is even easier because it's cheaper and you may have envelopes maybe around from the days when we used to send things through snail mail they're still available anyway pop it in the envelope seal the envelope you can put symbols outside the envelope maybe some pentagrams you might want to put a satin symbol because satin is the planet of binding and then put it somewhere safe where nobody is going to tamper with it or uh, release it in any way and if you want to release the bind then all you have to do is undo the bag undo your envelope or take it out of the freezer and then just undo the piece of paper and then do a short spell uh, this person is no longer bound and then you can destroy uh, all of the contents quite safely Another thing you can do with your piece of paper is before you roll it up is you can anoint it with herbs or oils such as rosemary, frankincense, clove. If you want to bring some sweetener to the situation, you can add some honey or some sugar so that will just sweeten the person. 
uh, particularly if it's a situation where they're, they're very bitter, perhaps. <laughs> you might want to bring some sweetness into it. There's various different ways you can modify this to try and make it as harmless as you can for both you and for them. When you're binding somebody, you're not harming them in any way, like a curse, but you are manipulating the situation and you are manipulating them. So you do need to be very certain that it is something that you can justify ethically. Okay, just wanted to say that because a lot of people these days just use witchcraft willy-nilly and feel that they can run around doing whatever they want just because they can. And the problem is there are actually repercussions to doing that. It might not be in the way that you think the repercussions will come, but they do come. And it's usually in forms of more of the same stuff coming at you or just simply you just not having a very happy life or really being connected to, to yourself in the end because you've just allowed your ego to run amok. Okay, so make sure it is something that's really, you really need to be binding from. It's a real threat to you in some more tangible way. If you want to know more about how you can do uh, your spells to make them more successful, uh, binding may be a part of a spell plan that you need to have, particularly if you're trying to save your job or something, save your livelihood, then you may need to have a bit of a strategy. Uh, spell work does come with a strategy sometimes. I have the Spellcaster checklist. It is a free PDF that you can download to uh, help you with your spell work. So the link to that is in the description field uh, below this video, along with the How to Start Your Witchcraft Practice link that's also in the description field underneath this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be.